so glad you have joined us today. Would you just continue to worship the Lord? come to you this this day and just say thank you father thank you for your love thank you for your goodness to us thank you for your mercy on us father things are pretty pretty difficult right now things are very confusing we don't know from one day to the next how things are going to go for us but there's one thing we can always be sure of, that you are always up to something good and that you are always faithful Lord we can always trust and rely on that that no matter what is happening in our world you are faithful Lord God and so Lord as we just continue to worship right now Father 
We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our heads up, we lift our hearts. We say, Father, have your way in us. Have your way in our lives, in our minds, in our hearts. Have your way in our actions. Have your way in everything pertaining to us, Lord. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, your mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God
That song, speaking of the goodness of God, is really a beautiful reminder. Today we want to take communion, and of course the only reason we can take communion is because of the goodness of God. We're going to ask that you do what we've done before. and You don't have the regular communion elements there at your home, but we're going to ask that you would, in just a moment, pause um, this service on your computer or your television and go to your kitchen and grab whatever element you might have, a little piece of bread or a cracker or something. Get a beverage, uh, some water or some juice or some soda, something like that. Uh, I, I'm here at the church, and so I actually, I have an animal cracker, and I'm going to take communion with an animal cracker. And uh, someone said to me, how long has it been since you had an animal cracker? And I think it's been about as long as you might think. But I've got my Perrier, my, my nice cold beverage that I like to drink, and let's just pause right now your video and would you go and get uh, some kind of a piece of bread or a cracker and a drink and then let's resume uh, by taking communion together. Welcome back. I know it's kind of different to take communion with, with a beverage you buy at Costco or at the store and a cracker. But let's just pray and allow the Lord just to sanctify these as a symbol. Lord God, we just thank you for the elements that we hold in our hands right now. We thank you that you would just sanctify these symbols, that they would be remindings for our hearts that uh, you gave your life, your blood, your body, for the forgiveness of our sins so that we could have relationship with God. And we just thank you even for these elements. They're not the traditional elements, but we're just kind of making do uh, during this pandemic. But we thank you that we are setting aside this moment to remember what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. It says in the Bible, for I receive from the Lord what also I pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he took the bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord God, we thank you for this cracker, this piece of bread that we're eating together. We thank you that it reminds us that you gave your all so that we could know Jesus. That it was not without cost that you paid with your body. And we eat this in remembrance of what you did for us and, and out of gratitude. Thank you so much in Jesus' name. Go ahead and eat the bread. The scripture goes on to say in the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Would you pray, Lord God, as we take a sip of the drink that we have, in our minds, we are thinking of the symbolism of the blood of Jesus that was shed. It was shed for our forgiveness. There is no one who does good, not even one, the Bible says. And we recognize that we're in that group. And we thank you that out of your grace and mercy, you paid it all by shedding your blood. And so we drink this cup in remembrance 
of what you did for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and take a drink. Praise the Lord. It may be a pandemic, but we can still worship God through communion. Thank you for sharing communion. Thank you for tuning in to our Faith Assembly Online Experience. We're so glad you're able to join us today from the comfort of your own home or from wherever you find yourself at. Have a couple of announcements. Number one is our Zoom faith groups, and they've been taking place throughout the week. Now, if you're interested in joining one of our Zoom faith groups, you can visit our website at ivyfaithassembly.org or go to our Facebook page and get more information through there. Secondly is CityServe. And a couple of days ago, there was a tragic fire that struck the community of Nyland. But through CityServe, we were able to respond and meet some of the needs of the people who were affected. Also through CityServe, we've been able to bless numerous of families here in our very own Imperial Valley. And also through CityServe, this past Thursday, we were able to bless families who are in need with over a thousand boxes of produce. And as a matter of fact, we can use your very help in delivering some of these boxes of produce to these families who are in need. And if you're interested in being a part of that, you can call the office and ask for Sandy and she would gladly direct you in how you can be a part of it. And lastly, we just wanna thank every single one of you who have supported this ministry during this pandemic. We know these times are very confusing and hard, but we are so grateful for your generosity. We wanna remind you that you can continue to give by going to ivyfaithassembly.org. You can mail in your offering. You can come by the church and drop it off. And if you're not comfortable with leaving your home, you can call someone at the office and they would gladly go and pick it up. And before I end, I wanna thank every single one of you that were able to come by and support our firework booth stand. We are so grateful for your generosity and thank you for supporting missions, children's ministry and youth ministry because that's where all the proceeds went to. We hope you have a great day and an awesome Sunday or whatever day you're watching. I will never forget, it was 1989. As a matter of fact, I have not forgotten this and I have even shared this story several times with our church, but it's emblazed in my mind I was watching my beloved Washington State Cougar football team play the dreaded and hated USC Trojans. Now you have to understand, when you're a Cougar fan, uh, such as myself, we lose almost all the time to USC. But pretty much back in 1989 and in those days, we, we've won some games in, in modern times but back in those days, USC knew when they played us, they were gonna have a win. As a matter of fact, at the time we played the game that I'm referring to right now, uh, USC had beat us 53 times and we had only won eight times. Now this day was gonna be different and it was different because we were beating the giants like Goliath. We were like David. And we were ahead of those guys, and it was 17 to 12. And, and, and we were about to win the mighty game against USC. The clock read 30 seconds to go in the fourth quarter, and we were on the one yard line, about to punch it in one more time for another touchdown. Now some people might say, just take the knee uh, and win the game. But one of the coaches made the decision, hey, let's just punch it in and let's really humiliate these guys. Well, I think you know where I'm going with the story. 17 to 12, the Cougars ahead, 30 seconds to go. And uh, the snap was made and I don't know exactly what happened but the quarterback fumbled the football USC ran through our line recovered the football and ran all the way back to their goal line scoring the game winning touchdown as a matter of fact I believe they didn't even kick the extra point because they won the game 18 to 17.
Why am I reliving that horrible experience? I don't know. I should never, now I'm going to be depressed for the whole rest of this sermon. But today I want to talk to you about the topic of perseverance. On that day in 1989, my cougars needed a little bit more perseverance because they kind of choked and they gave up at the last minute and they lost the game because of it. We need perseverance. We need to not give up right now, don't we? America is struggling with what I call uh, quarantine fatigue. We've made months of sacrifices, personal sacrifices, economic sacrifices. And now it seems like the numbers in our county for uh, coronavirus a positive uh, diagnosis are going up. And the county and the state are retightening the clamps. The stay-at-home order is back in force. And then if that weren't enough, as we talked about so much, we're looking in the news and it's just violence and rioting and racism and, and prejudice and, and political hatred and, and it's all up. My weight is up. How about yours? It's a lot of bad news going on right now. I remember in 1962, I, I, I don't remember, well, I was only two in 1962, but I do remember that a book came out at that time, and it was turned into a musical, and the name of the book was this, Stop the World, I Want to Get Off. Have you ever felt like that? I think a lot of us feel that way right now in 2020 in the middle of this pandemic. Perseverance is desperately needed. We're starting to feel like we just want to quit, like we'll never come out of this. We need perseverance. And what happens in people's lives, and even in Christians' lives, is it seems like when it gets hard and we meet opposition, we cool off, we back off, we want to quit. No wonder why so many Christians lack spiritual vitality that, that the Bible promises. It's because we lack perseverance. But the Bible promises that we will reap if we don't grow weary, if we don't quit. In Galatians 6, 9, it says, Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. We desperately need to learn this lesson of biblical perseverance. Here's one definition of perseverance, and it's this, to be persistent and consistent in doing God's will over time in spite of difficulty, opposition, or discouragement. So the defining factor in perseverance is the presence of difficulty, opposition. I mean, if you don't have difficulty or opposition, you don't need perseverance. But when things are going difficultly, when they're going badly, that's when we need perseverance. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. We've got to never give up. Many of the best things in life take perseverance. It's possible that almost all of the best things in life take perseverance. I mean, how about, you know, when you get married, look at the couples that have great marriages and great relationships. That means that they, they, they worked through a lot of really difficult things. The two becoming one is, is a difficult process. If you've ever raised a kid that's turned out to be uh, a healthy, uh, productive, responsible citizen, you persevered through some pretty hard times, didn't you? If you have any money saved in your savings account, it took perseverance. If you have any kind of training, knowledge, degree, it all took perseverance. But I really believe that perseverance is all about trusting God and living in His strength over time. It's not just about trusting God and living in His strength. It's, it's trusting God and living in His strength over time. In Hebrews 10, 23, it says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. you got to not waver. There's perseverance. 
I actually believe in perseverance for Christians so much that I believe that perseverance is really an evidence of your relationship with Jesus. People that really know how to persevere through difficulty and opposition, I think that's a sign that you are plugged in to a relationship with Jesus. In Mark 4, remember, you know, the four different kinds of soils? You know, the rocky soil, the path, which was basically no soil, the weed-filled soil, and the good soil. But there was this one kind where um, it's the rocky soil, and there's not a lot of uh, dirt there, and there's not a lot of place for roots to go deep. And so the plant grows up really fast, and it looks like, hey, this is successful. But the plant dies out quickly because there's, there's no root. I think a lot of Christians today are in that category. The lack of perseverance, the lack of depth of root in relationship with the Lord. A lot of quitting, a lot of giving up, a lot of just giving in. Jesus said these words in John 8, 31. He said, and he was talking to the Jews who had believed in him, so he was talking to Christians. He says, if you continue in my word, then you're truly my disciples. If you continue in my word, that's interesting. He didn't say, if you believe in my word, if you confess my word, those are important things. But he says, if you continue, that means to continue to get that word and to believe that word and to do that word. Disciples are those who persevere. They continue. I think that based on the scriptures that we've already read, perseverance is about the law of sowing and reaping. In this crazy day and age, you know, there's some people, they believe they should get an award just for showing up. Hey, I ran in the race. I should get a trophy. I should get a ribbon. Well, sorry about that. That's not the way life works, and that's not even the way our faith works. The Bible says don't grow weary. The Bible says that you will, row, will, you, you will reap what you sow. I've said this many, many times, and I'm going to say it many times more. There is always blessing when you're obedient to the Lord. Let me say it again. There is always blessing when you're obedient to the Lord. But let me tell you something about that. That blessing doesn't always come immediately. As a matter of fact, that blessing comes, that obedience is over time, over and over and over, over time. And there is blessing that comes from that. But that blessing doesn't necessarily come five minutes after the obedience to the Lord. In Galatians 6, 7, it says, Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. The verb for sow, which of course means planting, whatever a man plants, this he'll also harvest. It means to, uh, to do it once and to continue to do it. So basically you could say this, um, for whatever a man plants and keeps on planting, this he will also reap. There is a lot about perseverance. Just keep on doing the right thing. You've heard me say this a hundred times and I'm going to say it a hundred more times. Just do the next right thing. You might be overwhelmed with the current situation. I am at many times, I'm just so discouraged. I hate to watch the news. It's just discouraging. There's so much hatred and hate speech and, and discouraging news all over the place. Sometimes I feel overwhelmed. But what do we do about it? There may be a lot of problems, even nationally, but even in your own life, your own finances, your own job situation, your family, your health, all of these things. What do you do? I just say this, do one thing. There's chaos everywhere, there's problems in all corners, just do one thing. Just do the next right thing. You see, you can't change the past and you cannot change the reality of what's out there in the world, but you can change your future. Let me say that again. You cannot change your past, but you can change your future. And the way you do that is through perseverance, is by doing the next right thing, and then the next right thing, and then the next right thing. 
Philippians 3, 13 and 14 say this, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Hey, forget the past. You can't change the past. You can change the future by pressing on by doing the next right thing. And if you do the next right thing over time, perseverance, it pays huge dividends. Over and over making that right choice. Start by showing up and making some effort. Any effort will pay off a little bit. But if you make, if you show up with the presence and power of God inside of you and you do your best, I'm telling you that that is how we change the world. We change the world by showing up in the strength of God and doing our best. You know, statistics tell us that almost everyone who makes a New Year's resolution has broken it by February 1st. And that's even generous. A lot of people have broken their New Year's resolution before the end of the first week. Do the next right thing over and over again. I've told the story of back when I was in high school. You know, I guess I was smart enough to where I could get all A's and B's without really working very hard. And so I'd just kind of go in and I'd participate in the conversations and I'd kind of do the minimal amount of effort to, to get the paperwork in and to take the test. And I was fortunate enough to get A's and B's. But I always regret when it came time for graduation in high school, I was three-tenths of a point away from the honor roll of getting a little yellow cord around my neck. A lot of my friends had the honor roll yellow cord, but I didn't get one because I hadn't really applied effort. Then I go to college with the same mentality, oh, I'll just kind of do what I need to do to get by. And guess what? I couldn't get A's and B's anymore in college uh, when I was just working half-hearted. I could pretty much just get B's. I happened to marry a woman who was an A student. I don't know if my wife ever got a B. And now all of a sudden I was real close to someone who worked really hard and got A's. And she graduated high school and college with honors. And me you know, I just kind of got by with my A's and B's and then I got to college and I was kind of content with my B's. But I kind of watched her and I realized that I didn't want to be that guy that missed on a roll, that I wanted to be someone that was a person of excellence in Christ. I was growing in my faith. And as soon as I got married, I started to work harder. You know what's interesting? I started to get almost all A's in my undergraduate. I, I got a B in a couple of classes, a couple of difficult classes, but, but I got almost all A's. And then I went on to grad school and I got a master's degree and I ended up getting all A's in that. And you know what was interesting? All it took was for me just to apply myself and just try and just work a little harder, just with some perseverance. And that is like, that is a metaphor of our lives. You could just get by, but God wants to bless you with more. Just put out a little more effort. God blesses those who persevere. And if we don't persevere, we don't get the blessing. In James 1, 12, it says, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. For once he's been approved, he'll receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. We've got to persevere under trial. Remember, perseverance is only needed uh, through the difficult times, when there's opposition, when it's hard. There's another problem in this world, 
And it's what I call the law of deterioration. Uh, everything in this world is governed by, by the second law of thermodynamics. Everything moves from a condition of order to disorder. It deteriorates, it collapses, it breaks down, it wears out. Just look at any piece of machinery, any item that is a physical item that you own, it gets old, you have to replace it. Our bodies are continually breaking down. I think once we hit about uh, 18 years old into our 20s, from then on it's all downhill. How many can say amen? And so there's, there's this law of physics, the law of thermodynamics that say everything is always breaking down. Our natural lives and our spiritual life are no exceptions. Our bodies are breaking down, but our spiritual life tends to start here <coughs> and, and, and we break down. <coughs> There's another law of physics that says an object in motion will take the path of least resistance. Listen, the path of least resistance for me happens to be in my leather easy chair with my channel changer and how I love to just sit there. But perseverance doesn't happen from my easy chair. And when I sit in that easy chair too long, even metaphorically in terms of our lives, you sit in your easy chair too long, life just kind of moves on and it deteriorates around you. We need perseverance to fight that. You know, it's interesting. When I was in my 20s, I was in shape and I did not exercise I didn't have an exercise re regiment, re 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 regimen. That's, what, that's the word I was looking for. I didn't regularly exercise, but I was in shape and I was healthy. When I got into my 30s, I realized that I was going to have to work at it to be healthy. When I got into my late 40s and, and into my 50s, and now, one month from now, I'm going to turn 60 years old. And, and, and physically, you feel this downward slide. And, and I have had to make a commitment to be a person that jogs and does strength training on a daily basis because I am fighting these, these two laws of physics that say everything deteriorates and, and you know, an object in motion takes the path of least resistance. And so I'm fighting that and I've got to persevere and I've got to wake up again tomorrow morning. I woke up this morning and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my exercise program and I did. And tomorrow I'm going to do the same thing. And I pray that the next day, and it's just to, to fight this deterioration. <clears throat> Listen, <clears throat> your family, your marriage, your finances, your health, it all wants to deteriorate if you don't work at it, if you don't persevere. It's all, I don't mean to say like this, but it's like it's all going down unless you do something about it. So let's do something about it. In Hebrews 2.1, it says, we, much, we must pay uh, closer attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away from it. How many times do we see this? People make a decision for Christ on a Sunday morning or maybe watching this, this video service. And it's emotional and it's transforming. And then, you know, kind of by the next day, it kind of starts to wear off a little bit. And by the next week, oh, that was nice. But now... There's no transformation. There's, no, there's, de, there's a, this deterioration sets in. We need perseverance. We get a high when we go to a, a church camp or a retreat or a service. Or maybe we have a great devotional one morning. But we've got to persevere throughout the day and throughout the days and the weeks. Otherwise, deterioration comes. We've got to daily persevere. The devil is trying to steal and kill and destroy from your life. And you and I have got to persevere daily and moment to moment to combat that and to even get stronger. Praise the Lord. You can be stronger in your life now than when you were younger. The, how do we do that? At Faith Assembly, the way we persevere and the way we fight this law of deterioration it's love, grow, connect, serve, share. We persevere by loving God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, by growing in our faith, by having a daily devotion. We persevere by, by connecting with believers, 
by being in a small group, a, a faith group. We, we serve others in some area of ministry. Right now we're doing a lot of serving in city serve. Farmers to families, giving food out. And we share our faith. Love, grow, connect, serve, share. This is what we do. And this is why it's so serious. We say, take the faith challenge. And if you don't take the faith challenge, I really believe that probably your spiritual life is deteriorating. That's why we've got to persevere and push forward. Love God by being in church. Grow in faith by having a daily devotion. Connect with believers by being a part of a small group. Serve others and share your faith as the Lord gives you an opportunity. Persevere. You'll, it'll pay dividends. Here's a question. What if I'm reaping bad decisions from my past? What if some of the bad stuff happening right now happens because of some of the bad choices I've made? The question is, will God help me? And I want to say, in all caps, Y-E-S, exclamation point. God will help you. And here's how you do it. You can't change the past. Maybe you are reaping uh, health problems from what you did in the past. Maybe financial, maybe relational, or marriage, or family. You can't fix that past you can't change the past but let me tell you what you can do you can start persevering right now you can start doing the next right thing you can start the sowing and reaping process over again I remember in 1998 Cindy and I lost all of our cash in the stock market when it crashed And we started over. And that's kind of what we do in, in life. It's, it's metaphoric again for our lives. You can't change the past. Maybe you made some real mistakes. Start today. Start by, by reading the Word and by praying and, and, and being a person that does the right thing, getting close to the Lord. Start doing the next right thing and sowing those seeds. And you just keep doing that. And then pretty soon you're going to start in that same field where, where it used to be filled with weeds and brokenness. You start pulling those weeds out and planting good seed. And you keep persevering over time. And I'm telling you what happens is pretty soon a crop's going to start to come up and you're going to start to feel that excitement. Like, like when I was getting B's in college and then all of a sudden I started getting A's. And sometimes I would have the best grade in the whole class and it's like, oh my goodness, this feels good. This feels a lot better than just barely getting by. If you're reaping the, the crop of bad decisions, start sowing and reaping and persevering. And God will do incredible things. In Isaiah 55, it says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. When you call on him, he's right there. He will deliver you. Oh, that's incredible. Somebody might say, Pastor, why does it seem so hard sometimes? Here's the answer. Because it is hard. That's just the truth. It's hard for everybody. There is not one person that doesn't think that this life is hard. Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation, but take courage, I've overcome the world. He says, this world is hard, but if you grab hold of my hand and you learn to persevere and trust me, I'm taking you through it. I'm going to walk you through the valley of the shadow of death. That's right. We're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Why does it seem so hard? Because it is hard. It's just a myth that somehow life is supposed to be, we can get to a place where life is like Disneyland. You know, the, the fairy tales we grow up on, boy meets girl, they fall in love, they get married, and what does it say at the end? And they lived happily ever after. Well, that's not the truth. They come home from the honeymoon, and they have their first big fight. That's what happens in real life. 
But God says, if you learn to persevere, I'm going to turn that marriage into the most fulfilling experience of your life. Life is hard, but Jesus will be with us to help us persevere all the way through it. You know what's interesting? A few years ago, I found this. In, nine, in, in not 19, in 2006, I wrote a full page of uh, goals for this church. And these were dreams. Like, oh, if we could ever get to this, we'll be on Easy Street. In 2006, here are some of the dreams and goals I had for the church. That we would have over 300 people on a normal Sunday in attendance. Imagine that. That we'd have over 100 kids in children's church. 75 kids out in the youth. That we'd have uh, over 300 kids come to our VBS. That we'd have a couple of different worship teams. That our student center would have a worship team, that we would have salvations every week in our church, that we would remodel and double the size of the nursery and remodel the fellowship hall and the parking lot and remodel the kitchen and, and they just go on and on and on. And you know what's interesting? 14 years later, I look back at these things and those things were accomplished years ago. We've had uh, over 500 in attendance for quite a while and and uh, we've had five to fifteen decisions for Christ every single Sunday for the last four years and I was just praying that we would have at least one salvation every week but you know how this happened it happened through perseverance and we just each day we got up and we prayed as a staff and as a board and as leaders and you were working with us and all of these goals were met and we've, we've gone a thousand times more in some ways than we could have ever dreamed. The question in perseverance, is there ever a time to quit? Maybe occasionally God will say, I'm just going to pull you out of that difficult job. You don't have to deal with that anymore. Your marriage, you're in such an abusive situation. I'm just going to pull you out into safety. Is there a time to quit? Maybe occasionally, but I think almost all the time, God wants us to give us victory in that situation. He wants to show that He's bigger than the trials and the problems and the health crisis and the financial crisis and the depression and, and all of these. He's bigger than all that in your life. And He wants to prove it to you again and again and again. In Isaiah 55, 12, it says, You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and the trees of the field will clap their hands before you. My wife and I have a saying that comes from this scripture. Oh, when it gets hard and we just want to quit. We get to the point where we just say, You know what? Let's wait until the trees of the field are clapping their hands until we have victory over the situation. And that's sometimes when God releases you. After you have victory, then he says, now it's time to get another job. Because God wanted to teach us something through that perseverance. And people that quit, they never learn that. People that quit, they never get to know what it's like to lose weight or to be in shape. Or more importantly, to be close to the Lord. To see Him give them victory. When you think it's all over and God says, it is not all over. You get up and put one foot in front of another and I will walk you through it. And do you know how He does that? I'm saving the best for last. God Himself is the one who gives you the power and the ability to do the next right thing, to persevere. In Philippians 4.13, it says, come on, you know it, say it with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can't persevere on your own. You don't have the strength. Me and my own, I'd probably be a quitter. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. 
That's why we've got to be close to Him and be in the Word and, and just live in that daily presence, moment-to-moment -moment dependence on Jesus in prayer and the Word. So church, let's keep on by loving God and growing in faith and connecting with believers and serving others and sharing our faith. Let's keep tithing. Let's keep giving to offerings. Thank you for those of you that, are, that have been faithful in tithes and offerings. We saw it, it fall off just a little bit in June. And I just pray that you keep that vision of, of, being, of being strong in the Lord and saying, I'm just going to keep Love, Grow, Connect, Serve, Share. I'm just going to keep being a tither and giving offerings to missions. I'm going to keep social distancing. I'm going to keep wearing my mask. I'm going to keep eating right. I'm going to keep exercising. And we're going to do it all through the strength of the Lord, through Christ who strengthens us. Keep persevering. God will bless you. Please do not give up. Do not give in. Do not slow down. Do not cool off. You just keep persevering and watch God do an incredible miracle. God, I just pray for each one right now that has heard this message. And I pray, God, that you would touch them in a powerful way and that you would give them through your spirit the desire and the strength to continue moving forward, to continue persevering. And if they had thoughts of quitting or maybe they did quit or they pulled back or they drew back or they cooled off or they backed off, Lord, get them back out there in the game off the bench and put them back in the game and say, let's go do this together, you and me. Lord, I pray that people are encouraged by the incredible power of your Holy Spirit, the power of your name, the authority that we have in Jesus. You are amazing. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, if you are watching and you realize that you kind of gave up on your relationship with the Lord, I want you to pray with me right now. Maybe you've never given your life to the Lord, but would you pray this prayer with me, giving your life to Jesus? Just repeat these words after me. Dear Heavenly Father, please forgive me for all my sins. I'm sorry that I've not lived for you, but that change is starting today. I want to make Jesus the Lord and leader of my life. And I believe that God raised him from the dead. So Lord, I give you my life and I will never take it back. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, would you just shoot, shoot us an email or put a comment down below say, I prayed with Pastor Dan. And we'll just connect with you and see if we can't get you plugged in to a closer relationship with the Lord. I'm just going to ask the worship team to come back and lead us in one more worship song. I thank you. Thank you for all your help. By the way, we continue to need your help every Thursday at 9 o'clock to feed our hungry community. We are blessed with 4,000 boxes of food a week. And you and I get to be a part of sharing that. If you haven't participated, call us and get involved. I love you and look forward to seeing you right back here next week. God bless you.
Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling.